Hey y'all, we're going to be continuing with chapter 11. We're finishing up. Now this is very graphic. I just want to warn y'all. I ran back in and cut some lights. I told the girls to follow me. I was shocked when later that day, I was standing in the neighbor's living room, looking at their security camera video and thought everyone could see the girls walk up to me and I put them in the truck. I loaded them in the back seat. Bella said they couldn't ride with me because they didn't have their car seats. I remember telling her, this time it's all right. Oh my goodness, that breaks my heart. It hurts, but I remember being so mad that they were still alive. The girls sat curled up with each other noticed they were consoling each other kind of whimpering but not really crying the only thing they talked about was why did it stink in the truck what goes on with this again it's just very disrespectful i think i could not believe that they came back to life now i had this to deal with for the second time plus shenan i was still shaking and in a sweat and my heart was pounding so hard in my chest. I didn't know what to do next. I didn't know what I was even doing. Nothing made any sense to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing made any sense. Nothing made sense to me. I had not planned this out carefully enough. You don't say. I shouldn't have been planning out a murder in the first place. I remember just feeling so angry. A feeling, an emotion. He has emotions. I had never experienced before. It took me an hour to get to the site. I had not calmed down at all. The rest of the story, you know. I dumped Shanann on the ground. Then I walked back to the truck and with the blanket that Celeste was holding, I put it over her head and smothered her. I carried her up the stairs. I opened the hatch and I was surprised how small the opening was. I lifted her up and down into the hole. She went in pretty smoothly. I remembered as I was lowering her body that I would never see her again, but instead of the love I had always had for her, numbness was in its place. I could not feel anything for her. This dude is saying he could not feel anything for his two or three year old daughter that he just smothered. And walking up the stairs to the oil. Mm -mm. Mm. I'm in a shower here. I can't even deal with crude oil, a crude oil tank. I just can't get it. instead of the love I had always had for her, numbness was in its place. I could not feel anything for her. I couldn't believe how easily it was to just let her drop through the hole and let her go. I heard the splash as she hit the oil. This is a sick mother effort right here. Like, not even mental. Like, this is evil. Like, he's like one of the worst of the worst to me. Then without blinking an eye, oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Then without blinking an eye, I went right back to my truck and went over to Bella. Oh, she asked me if I was going to do to her what I had just done to Celeste. Oh, my gosh. Because the sister watched her sister be murdered by the hands of their daddy. Oh, my Jesus. Sweet baby Jesus, Lord. I don't think I answered her. I just put the same blanket over her head and smothered her. Mm. I could not believe, though, how much of a fight she put up. Little quiet Bella had a will to live. And he stole it from her. Can you imagine? Makes me so sad. Nothing registered in my head for her. Out of all three, Bella is the only one that put up a fight. I will hear her soft little voice for the rest of my life saying, Daddy, no. She knew what I was doing to her. She may not have understood death, but she knew I was killing her. 
I was so empowered at the time. He is the worst of the worst. Yo, he, Chris Watts felt empowered at the time that he murdered his pregnant wife, son, baby daughters. <laughs> yo, if that's an empowered man, yo. This is just mind blowing to me. I had the strength to climb those stairs for the second time and put her little body through the hole in the next tank. He wouldn't even put him in the same one in depth. Bella was harder to get down the hole. Her arms and shoulders did not want to fit through the hole, so I had to force her through the hatch. They told me they found a tuft of blonde hair. I, was, I would suspect that's when that happened. I did separate them purposely. He's the devil. I can't stand him. Why would you do something like that besides just pure evil? Like, why? But why? I was trying to get them as far away from Shanann as possible. Because you was cheating? I guess I put them in the tanks to make sure this time they didn't get up. Uh, when he says this, this is a problem for me. Listen, you say the um, autopsy results are like, they're sealed or whatever. We cannot read them. But I don't know if it's rumor or not. I don't want to tell you this. If it's not a fact, I'm not sure. But supposedly, Bella, they found crude oil in her lungs. I don't know if that's a rumor, though. I'm not sure. I don't want to spread rumor, but I heard that. And Celeste, none. Which to me means... Celeste was already deceased when being put in the crude oil tank. But if if any type of any kind of crude oil was in four year old Bella's lungs, that means she was still alive and inhaled this crude oil water mixture in the tank. He that means he threw her in there alive. She would be she would have been alive. That thought makes me sick. So I hope that's not true. That could be the worst of the worst. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Had I not killed them. Ugh. I guess I put them in the tanks to make sure they not get up. I don't know why except for the anger I felt. You asked me why. I was so angry with Shanann. It was a couple reasons. I was angry that she kept me from my family. And I was angry because she was standing in the way of me being truly happy with someone I wanted to be with. Listen to this pussy boy. Excuse my language, folks. This had, I'm all on one with this one. I don't think I could be in the room with him. Oh. Had I not killed him when I got home that afternoon from work, Shanann would not have let me in my own house. Would have locked the doors or had the locks changed to show me she was in control still why didn't you open up that big trap your mouth the one you run in these days sir Ooh, where was your voice then you finding your voice and stuff i would have had to make a scene which is something i did not want to do for the neighbors to see nah instead i'll just murder my whole entire family the neighbors won't mind i don't, I don't mind if they see any of that I had to put the girls in the tank so they wouldn't get up the second time. He was making sure they were dead, which means to me, uh, he was struggling to smother them, strangulation, whatever he was doing. They said uh, suffocation, so smothering. Oh Lord, I don't think Bella was um was dead when he put her in there. I think he got tired of fighting with her. He just said that Bella fought the most, and he was angry and he was pissed off because. Uh, the two little girls, I mean, came back to life in his words, you know. He had already smothered them in the house. And, boom, they got up, walked in the room, catching him murdering their mother. Oh, my gosh, he was so shocked. And now he had to kill him for the second time. And poor, poor Chris, because he had to murder his girls for the second time. And plus, he still had Shanann to go and dump in the uh, shallow grave, this monster. 
think that he gave a shit about, oh, let me just finish smothering her. She's fighting me, you know? Remember she ripped something in her arm, in her lip, the things connecting the lip and the teeth and the gums. Oh my goodness, I forget the name right now. This got me so upset. I hope he didn't put that child in there alive like I think he did. He is the worst of the worst. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> mean he would have put her in there alive i think she was still fighting inside the tank it wasn't just too big to fit in the slot she was still fighting him i think oh god oh my goodness i then went and dug a hole for shenan the dirt was loose and i remember easy to move easy breezy huh christopher when i dug the hole it seemed a lot deeper than it was as i pulled on the sheet she rolled out and into the hole he makes me sick I think she had given birth. This moron. He landed face down. This piece of shit, I'll strangle him myself. Lord help me. I remember being so angry with her that I was not going to change how she landed. Woo! I hope them people in jail will give him a hard time. They need to get him out of PC protective custody to let the um, big boys handle up on him. I'm reading a book for YouTube. I remember being so angry with her that I was not going to change how she landed. I didn't think about if the hole was deep enough or if I had the hole in the right place or if I had made sure to pick everything up so there was nothing left lying around. I realized I just murdered my daughters twice. Listen to him. He's admitting it too. I, hmm. I still don't understand how that happened because I know they were dead the first time. No, you didn't know, you fool. My entire life lie there on that oil site. All I could feel was now I was free to be with Nikki. He is gross. Feelings of my love for her was overcoming me. Oh, poor you. I felt no remorse. This is what he's telling this author, Charlene Cadle. This is in his words. I felt no remorse. He felt no remorse. This is what he's saying still to this day. The darkness inside of me had won. It was still in me, though. I thought maybe permanently. I felt so evil. You are evil. Swallowed up by this thing inside of me. Oh, no soul. I felt like I could kill anything and be justified for doing it. Well, Christopher Lee Watt, my pal, you was wrong on that note. That feeling, that's a negative. You couldn't kill anything and anyone and be justified for doing it. You locked up. And if it were me, you'd be dead. You death penalty. Uh, I didn't feel any remorse for what I did. He's going to remind us again. He, he has to say it over and over. I didn't feel bad for doing it. I didn't feel any remorse for what I did. I didn't feel bad for killing my entire family. I didn't repeat that. He did that many times in a row. I'm going to take a picture for y'all. I really, film it, I really didn't feel anything. My mind went to the dog. Huh? All of the L's in my Bosco 100 voice. Did I remember to put him in the cage? Whoa, this is what he's thinking about, I cannot. What possible horror could have been going through those precious little minds at that time, not understanding, but understanding enough to know something was horribly wrong? Not being confronted by their mommy or even their daddy. Having hopes in their little minds, I'm sure, that mommy was going to be fine and they would be back home in just a little while. They had no concept of what was truly happening or lying just ahead of them. Just as Shanann had no idea what she was walking into. Well, actually, I believe even little Bella, this four-year-old, she did know. He just said, so he's seen it, he knows. He, he did know that she was and murdered she didn't know what death was she knew that he was killing her he said that sick fuck sorry y'all for the f i am a liar i can't believe this man they had no concept of what was truly happening liar i believe they were probably very afraid you don't say no shit sherlock after christopher i can't stand to call him christopher i think i'm going to chris or cw something guys 
After Christopher killed his family and drove away, Nikki texted him to look up the song by Metallica band called Battery. Oh, I looked that song because I had no idea what in the hell. Those lyrics, oh my goodness, y'all. Mm. If y'all want me to, I'm going to um post them. Upload them. I challenge you to look up the full lyrics of this song, see? <laughs> well, I'm going to look up and put them up here. I'm saying something, they saying it. Okay. I find it interesting that we should believe it's only a coincidence. Right. So do I find that interesting. Bullshit. After Christopher wrote this letter to me, I asked him if he really put the girls in oil batteries so he could make sure they didn't get back up the second time. He replied, yeah, it seems. He already said yes. Christopher went back to work that day like it was a normal day. Later, when interviewed, his co-workers said he acted like it was a normal day. They noticed nothing different about him at all, except they said his clothes were not as neat as normal. They mentioned how he usually came to work looking very well put together. Uh-oh, I dropped something. <laughs> okay, y'all, that was the end of chapter 11. I apologize for using um, the bad language. This book has me and my feelings. I'm emotional. And I still have this cold. My voice is not back. But I want to get through this book. Next video will be chapter 12. I'm on it.